Well, hey, everybody, it's Wes McDonald here, and I want to thank you for joining us on another episode of Level Up Live. And this program is designed to help you with your businesses, to give you some uh, inspiration and knowledge to be able to drive your business further. So really excited uh, about the guests that I have today, who I'll bring in in just a minute. Um, today, we're going to be talking about uh, future-proofing your business and how you can actually work uh, with your people uh, to bring them to not just top of mind, but uh, top of heart. So for everyone that has joined us today, um, we would love to, uh, during the show or in the recording, let us know where you're watching from. So without further ado, I will bring in our guest, Mr. Grant Muller. How are you, sir? Good morning. Thanks for having me. Oh, absolutely. Really great to, you know, to have you on the call. And it's kind of fun. Uh, we were doing a little bit of the prep work beforehand. Uh, you mentioned that you're in a city that I was just recently in. So why don't you let the world know where you're joining us from? I'm in Denver, Colorado. It's currently raining a little bit, but it looks like it's going to be another warm day. Yeah, great city. Uh, my wife and I really enjoyed it there. Um, I was speaking at an event. Uh, some of the folks watching this might have been there, actually. And uh, it was just a great city and a great uh, area to explore. So as always, I'm joining uh, from just across the border in Canada in Buffalo. So that makes us an international call already. <laughs> Fantastic. My first global podcast opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, also, folks, uh, remember, comments and questions are always welcome. Uh, join the conversation as we you know, move through this, right? So uh, before we get started, Grant, why don't you introduce yourself for audience? So I'm Grant Muller. I am a realtor by trade, uh, also an author, speaker, and coach. I'm a high-performance coach and just released a brand new book called Top of Heart. That's great. And I will uh, bring that up uh, right now just so people can see where uh, they can actually uh, get that book. So very simple. If you just head over to Amazon, uh, type in uh, Top of Heart Grant Muller you'll be able to access uh, the book there. So I can see a Kindle version, uh, paperback and hardcover. So, you know, whatever, you know, people would like to, you know, however they would like to access that, right? And so maybe okay. um, just tell us a little bit about uh, what inspired you to write this particular book. Absolutely. So uh, I had some early corporate success in my life and ended up in an internet startup. We all got rich. Uh, when, when we went public, this is the late 90s, you know, oh, Porsches, Porsches and Ferraris started showing up in the parking lot. We were wearing holy jeans to work way before Google. Breakfast, lunch and dinner was catered. Uh, you know, the whole, the whole thing, as you can imagine, tech startup. And uh, unfortunately, it didn't solve a major problem for me. Um, I made it. I was a millionaire by 30. But I remember sitting in my fancy condo in Denver overlooking the skyline thinking, on the day we went public, is this it? <laughs> I still don't like who I am. Um, I'm pretending to be someone I'm not in the world and I'm miserable. And uh, so I started a, an old habit I had, had left behind for the work life and that was drinking daily. And um, super, super uh, heavy drinker uh, for the next few months and then discovered cocaine. And um, unfortunately within six months I had lost my job um, and I was, um, no problem. I was a millionaire. <laughs> and so I kept partying. I was spending about $30,000 a month on partying and, and cocaine at the time. And one day, one of my checks bounced because when you're partying like that, you don't sit down and, and do your check register each month. So I did what I always did. And I called up to exercise more shares and they said, Mr. Muller, there are no shares in your account. And I said, well, that's impossible. There should be about 16,000 left. Go check, please. And they came back to me and said, well, you left the firm over 90 days ago and you had 90 days to exercise the shares. Oh, no. Fortunately, you forfeited the shares. And so I lost a little over a million dollars in that instant. And I did what anybody reasonable would do. I had to reassess my life at that time. So I got really serious about that and thought, you know, I looked around the room. There were friends in that room. And I said, you guys, something has to change here. We're going to have to sell all the cars. And so we sold all the cars, bought more Coke. And uh, within a couple of days, the cars were gone. The Coke was gone. All the friends were gone. And within a couple more months, I was foreclosed upon and living on the streets. Um, I, at that time, had friends so I could stay couch surfing. Um, but within a few more years, unfortunately, um, my addiction got much, much worse. 
and I was literally living on the streets. Uh, so I wrote this book about what I learned through that journey, what I learned through my recovery journey, and then how I've applied it in business um, to build what really is just a, a, an inspired life that I love so much today. Hope that wasn't not, too long of an exclamation. I know, to... not not at all. And you know, I remember those days vividly. I actually worked for at that time during the dot com for an internet company called PSINet, which you may remember. Uh, UUNet and WorldCom were competitors of theirs. Yeah. And this was, you know, uh, before the telcos, uh, you know, sort of bought them after the implosion, right? And so I remember those days, and they were very Wall Streety, right? Like just. Yeah. Um, it, it seemed that that was the energy that was going. There's nothing that could stop us, right? That, yes, yes, you know, yes. the world was ours. And I remember I had a conversation with my dad and uh, he said, you know, you got to you got to slow down and start saving some of your money. Yeah. Um, and I said, Dad, this is the new economy. Like, Never what are you talking this. about? Yeah. And uh, and of course, him and his, his wise ways. He was a pipe fitter, steam fitter. Um, you know, it took a few years and he was absolutely right. You know, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I really love, uh, you know, your story. I'm sorry that you went through it to that degree. Yeah. Um, but wow, what a what a what a neat way to battle harden, you know, sort of your soul for, you know, for change. Right. Wow. Definitely. And, and the funny thing about or the irony about my story is, you know, I lost all that money in an instant. But the truth is, I would have likely held the stock longer other, uh, otherwise. And it went from 60 to, you know, less than a buck. Right. Just, just very <laughs> shortly thereafter in the early 2000s. So um, I probably would have lost it anyway. Yeah. Paper money. Right. I love it. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, and of course, um, maybe what we'll we'll talk about now. Right. Because like you said, you, you were really focused on, you know, if you didn't like yourself to build yourself into someone uh, that that you could like. And that's the most important thing in the world is liking yeah. yourself. Right. Yeah. And so maybe we can you know, that's a good segue into this. Um, in the sales process, often sometimes we don't like who we are, right? And and right. I've been in sales my uh, whole career. Um, more recently, as an influencer, uh, more recently, uh, working with um, uh, content and uh, guests like yourself, right? But I can remember those days, uh, the early days of of selling. And when you're young, I think that's when you really sort of sacrifice who you are to do the thing that you're told you're supposed to do, right? So that's right. Maybe you can talk a little bit about this because I think that people need, you know, need this message, right? How do you how do you bring the human, you know, back into the sales process, right? The person. So, uh, yeah, it's such a great point and such a great question. And when for me to get clean and sober, and it was a long journey. It's all in the book, of course, um, but. For me to get clean and sober, I had to get real with myself for the first time in my life because that's a part of recovery um, from addiction. And so at night, I was going to meetings and learning how to get real for the first time in my life. During the day, I was being trained to be a realtor. And um, here was the training. Call everyone you know, which, by the way, who do you think I knew at that point um, as I was living in a storage unit? <laughs> oh, wow. Who do, who do who did I know that was going to buy or sell? But the, the the lesson was call everyone you know, have a conversation with them based on this script. And then at the end of them, at the end of talking to them about the forward script, which, you know, how's your family? How's work, occupation? You do guys doing anything fun for the summer or uh, recreation? What are you working on right now? D for dreams. Oh, by the way. Who do you know that needs to buy a house in the next six months? And, and when I heard this script, I just wanted to throw up because I was finally getting real for the first time. And they were asking me to pretend to friend people. And, uh, you know, I knew that anybody I called who would take my call would see right through that. So I think in sales, most of us, we follow the rules and we do what's expected of us. And we keep all of our relationships, especially business relationships, safe and secure superficial. Um, and I think that's certainly the case in sales more than anywhere else. And so top of mind tactics really keep us in front of people rather than with people. Uh, they keep us relevant rather than real, you know, kissing babies, shaking hands and, and not going any deeper than that. And so I think in sales, we just go through the motions. We play the numbers games. We refer to human relationships as targets or uh, leads or prospects. Um, and then we dump them into funnels. And that's no longer fooling anyone. Uh, you know, as as we talked about briefly, 
you know, AI is replacing more and more of the moving parts of the sales process. And sure. so I really believe once that transformation is complete, all that's going to be left really is our ability to create these human connections. And by the way, they might, AI might take that too, but not for a while. <laughs> you so, know, I you don't, know. Think, I don't think so. Like <laughs> I said, I train people, you know, businesses on uh, using and implementing uh, artificial intelligence into their businesses. Right. And uh, part of it, as we talked about before the show, um, is sales training, right? Like, how do you actually use this new set of, uh, you know, um, uh, generative AI uh, to be able to help you in your sales process, right? Yeah. And and the message I always, you know, get back to them is it just gives you more time to do the human work, right? And it really resonates me with what you say, yes. because one of the expressions that we have in the sales world, um, because, you know, people say that, you know, robots can't, you know, sell things and say people buy from people, right? And it's like, yes, remember you said that. So people don't buy from funnels and they don't buy yes. from, you know, yes. whatever, right? It's like they buy from people, yes. you know, it's, uh, it's interesting that we, we know that and then we don't practice it. Is that fair? <laughs> exactly. And you know what I think that is, is I think it's really scary to show up as we really are. And I get that more than anyone else, right? So I had to go through this really dramatic version of that. But I do understand that, um, you know, I was taught to be, to build a relationship business and to be authentic, which is such a big buzzword. But how easy is that if I authentically don't like who I am? <laughs> and so, and, and I think we all have some level of that. Uh, and we can all work on that to some degree. Uh, so, so top of heart really is about, you know, trying to integrate our work and our play selves. Uh, it's about not trying to separate business relationships and personal relationships. There's a level, right? So I'm going to treat my sure. best friends differently than my best client sometimes, but also sometimes that person will be the same person. And so allowing each relationship to follow its natural path, letting each relationship develop as far as it wants to go and no further, not pushing it any further, whether it's a sales relationship or not. Uh, so that's about bringing the human back into the relationship and also recognizing we're we're sitting with or standing with another human being at the end of the day. And that person has fears about making the wrong decision when they buy from us and losing their job. That person might have had a fight with their daughter on the way to school that morning. That person might be way more excited about their vacation than making a buying decision right now. So yeah. just understanding the human beings that we have in front of us. Yeah. And, and I, you know, think that applies to the people that, you know, that we work with as well. Right. And I know yes. that oh, it, yes. it's kind of funny, like when, when you were a kid and you think back, you can always name your favorite teacher, right? If someone says, who was your favorite teacher? And, and I can say right away, it was Mrs. Spencer. She was, you know, my grade three English teacher. She was awesome. And I can say the same thing about uh, certain people that I've worked with over the years, right? Who's your favorite boss, right? Easy to throw out names like John McInnes, if you're out there, Hey, John. And um, it uh, it's, you know, those things, right? And it's because of the people, you know, element, right? Yeah, so absolutely. absolutely. So let's jump here for a minute. I wonder, you mentioned that obviously the top of mind stuff kind of going through the motions and the, the more superficial yeah. you know, things that we do, right? Um, how do we move from that? Like if we know that we need to make the, you know, the move, how do we do it? How do we move towards top of heart? So first, I always like to be clear that top of mind is is the beginning, and it's it's. I'm, this is not an either or thing. Top of heart is built upon top of mind. So uh, top of top of mind is no like trust, and um, top of heart is head hands heart, which is mindset, skill set, and heart set. And in mindset, there are four different pieces, but the beginning and end of mindset, the really important one we can talk about today because we only have so much time, is getting real, is being who we really are, showing up as we really are, getting clear about our beliefs, getting clear about our strengths, and getting clear about our values. So we understand who this person is that we are and how we want to show up. Uh, so, so getting real and, and getting present is a super important part um, of mindset as well. But you know, really practicing um, a human presence when we're with other human beings. It's just that simple. Yeah, I love it. And and being present, uh, you know, I think is one of those things that you hear about all the time now, right? That, you know, people are learning just how how important it is uh, to be present in our relationships, 
uh, in our work. Um, you mm -hmm. know, one of the things we do um, at Tiger Paw, who we do a lot of work for on a contracting level, they're a, a traction house. So one of the, you know, the things that they do in traction is to make sure that they remind you every time uh, to be present, right. To turn off your notifications yeah. to, you know, to do those kind of things. Um, because it is so important, like, and, and it's something that's so easy to forget. Right. Yeah. 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 It's really easy to sit with someone and think about what our next appointment is or what we're supposed to say next, of course. Um, and so I find that when we're a lot of times when we're following scripts that take us out of our humanity, our heart and put us into our head, we're not good at it. You know, there are studies that have that they've done with professional soccer players and basketball players where they ask them to do something a little different, like, for instance, to dribble the ball and to consciously think left, right, left, right, left, right. <laughs> and as you can imagine, they do a horrible job. So, <laughs> sure. So scripts have a place in guiding how we have conversations and maybe creating some structure to those conversations. But just like that soccer player, uh, we need to become excellent so that we manage that process. Uh, so um, I almost said self-consciously that too, uh, <laughs> unconsciously, right? So that we're running that. And so we can focus on the person that's in front of us and allow that human um, piece to really show up. You know, in real estate, for example, not all sales are, celebrations right so recognizing um you know when we go to when we go to the home and someone's selling their home because they lost their husband just taking a moment and believe me very few realtors do this but just taking the moment to truly say i'm sorry for your loss i can only imagine how difficult this must be right now i want you to know that we're going to take this process at a speed and in a way that feels right for you and i want to honor the fact that this isn't the easiest move for you. You know, that would be an example. Understanding that um, a woman uh, who maybe is a single mom whose husband left her in that house two years ago, now her kids are leaving her because they're going off to college. Yeah. What's the emotion, right? What's the humanity in that, in that transaction rather than worrying just about the transaction itself? Not everybody, everybody wants the most money for the least, least amount of pain when they sell something. <laughs> but they also want to be honored as human beings. And I think one of the greatest gifts we can give another human being is to let them know that they are seen. Yeah. Well, I mean, think of how important a uh, home is, right? And like you said, you had a period in your life where you didn't have one. So sure. yeah, I got to think that that appreciation for it and that understanding of just how fortunate uh, we are to have homes, right? You know, that it's, uh, yeah, I get it. I mean, uh, my wife and I had a, a place on the lake for, you know, for many, many years. Right. And well, like our kids grew up there. Yeah. I grew up on the beach and being able to you do call that. It a cottage? Don't you call yeah. it a cottage in that part of the country? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was our home, um, but it was, we hmm. also said it was our cottage because we lived there full time. Oh, cool. And oh, when we, when we sold it, um, there was great emotion because yeah. all of those memories of our children who are now young adults uh, were built there. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So I totally get it. It was a bittersweet thing. We were excited to have, you know, sold the house when we did. We got kind of the price we were looking for. And then leaving was, it was hard. Right. So yeah. I Absolutely. really like the fact that you, um, you know, that you honor that. Right. And I think yeah. certainly even in a, even in a regular sales process, if we're selling somebody something, it's usually to solve a problem. Right. I mean, that's what right. people are typically, at least in my world, they're buying things to solve problems. And for us to be very conscious and aware of what those problems are and to be delicate because some of them aren't, like you said, selling a house sometimes is not always a celebration. Yeah. Uh, solving a business problem is also not always a celebration, right? Usually there's something that's that's very broken is, you know, kind of impacting how people work every day, right? Right. And, and Right. And, you know, I just had, as an example, uh, uh, I just had someone choose to list their house with me. And most of my business is repeat business and referral business. I, I don't often compete for listings, but this was a very competitive listing. Uh, they had found me on Google and they didn't know me from anybody else. And so there were three other agents and um, this is a highly prized listing. And I brought some firepower, but I don't do a huge sales presentation. And they chose me and I asked them why. And they said, well, to be honest with you, um, you know, we were going to use so-and-so who's in the neighborhood and it seems like a really big deal, but you were the only one that asked the kids why they loved the house. 
that were selling. You were the only one that said hello to them and actually saw them as human beings. You know, they're 14, 15 years old kind of thing. And I'm not a parent. I'm not great with kids, but, <laughs> but they're other human beings. And so um, they just appreciated that I honored their kids. And to them, that showed a level of character um, that they felt comfortable with me. And it wasn't a gimmick. It was just me being human. But I think sometimes we forget we want to be the big deal in the room. Yeah. And what we need to do is make them the big deal. Right. Yeah. And that is the, I, I wouldn't necessarily, you know, say that it's sales 101. It's probably sales, you know, uh, 303, but it, it is helping people. And I've heard it, you know, said in such a way that it's like, make them feel like it was their decision. Right. Sure. And the best way to do that is to actually make it their decision. Right. Not yes. just to feel like it's their decision, yes. but that it actually is. Then, you know, you've done some service. Right. That's hey, great. I, I, I say if all roads in the sales process lead to what you want, that's not selling, that's manipulating. And, it's true. and you, just, you just said that so well, allowing them to, to make the decision. That sounds fundamental. Uh, and it's just one of those truths that uh, I think we need to operate in truths more often in the world. And sometimes those truths are powerful and sound very simple. And you can get the yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, 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 I got it. But common wisdom is not always common practice so it's not and you know one of the uh, companies that i respect most in the world is uh, tiger paw software they were just actually acquired by uh, revio and uh, it, it's uh, tiger paw software is one of those companies that would not sell anybody anything unless they needed it right mm -hmm. so if it wasn't a fit it wasn't trying to convince the customer that Oh, you know, don't worry about it. You don't really need that or, you know, whatever. Right. It was, that's not a fit for you. So yeah. thanks for, you know, letting us see if we could help in this situation. We can't. Right. And the referrals that you get from that kind of action, right. When people say, wow, what a great experience. Did you buy anything from yes. them? Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, but you should, <laughs> because the way your business is, that'll actually work for you. Right. Like yeah. it's yeah. that, I think it's so important. And I think back on my own career as well, Grant and, you never know when you're going to have to work with uh, somebody. They may have been a customer at one point. They may have been a supplier at one point, but you may be working with them, you know, for, for the same goals eventually. Right. And, and right. that to me is what really uh, signifies how important what you, uh, what you say and what you teach um, about the human element, because th that's how you maintain that. Right. People remember. So I love it. Absolutely. And I wonder, just in respect for your time, um, because uh, we're uh, we've got about seven minutes together today left uh, over, and if you could talk a little bit about some of the practices, maybe that people could use to do this, right? So, like actual, I guess, more tactical stuff in their emails, uh, sure. calls, lunches, sure. etc., uh, to build those mutually beneficial, long-lasting relationships. Absolutely. So we had mindset. Skill set is around building excellence and strength. So it's just recognizing that no matter how wonderful our relationships are, if we're not great at what we do, and if we're not powerful people with uh, in influence and power, um, then, then it all kind of falls apart. So that's skill set. A uh, heart set is really around building those mutually beneficial relationships. And I'll give you a couple of examples. Um, I used to, I, I, I'd lunch for a living is what I say. I mean, almost all of my business happens from staying in touch with clients through lunch. That's and, great. And, and so um, I love building a business that way. What I found, though, was at one point in my career, I decided, well, if relationships um, are important, I'm going to have as many relationships as I can. So I would stuff all these meetings into one day. And so I'd be driving to a lunch appointment, you know, having an argument with an, another agent about inspection items, for instance, slam my car into park, run into the restaurant, kind of looking at my phone on the calendar to see who I was about to talk to. Oh, hey, Tommy. And that was that. And you can imagine the kind of human being that showed up to lunch. Uh, it just didn't work really well. So now I, I do what's called a, taking a snapshot. And a snapshot is, cert, is just simply around building an intention. So anytime my car goes into park at any moment, whether I'm pulling into my garage at home, whether I'm pulling up to lunch for an appointment, um, I put my car in park. It reminds me to take a snapshot of the people that I'm about to, to see. And so now I might think, Oh, Tommy's mom just died. So I'm going to imagine Tommy and I'm going to think how I want to show up for Tommy. You know what? I'm going to show up with curiosity right now and I'm going to let Tommy lead the way. Maybe he needs to talk about this. Maybe he wants to talk about anything but this. Maybe he needs to sit and cry and I need to create safe space for him. 
but I'm going to show up with, with just curiosity and empathy. Where Sally, who just got engaged... I might show up with energy and enthusiasm. Oh my gosh, Sally, I'm so excited for you. And um, whatever it might feel genuine, of course, but but it's just about creating a little bit of intention because I believe that our job is not building relationships. Our job is helping people feel a certain way. We want to help people. We want to think about how what is the intention for how we want this person to feel when we're done having lunch with them? Not what do I want to accomplish? What do I want to talk about in my business? That all comes when we allow people to feel great around us. Then they will ask us the questions about our business. And it, it's so easy from there, of course. Yeah, it is, right? And, uh, you know, one of the things that I, I lead, I actually have a group uh, called the Top 100. And we meet weekly. And there are business professionals from uh, office equipment manufacturers like, you know, HP and Concom and Ulta. And then, you know, dealers like people that are actually selling their services and then software providers that are actually bringing, you know, kind of software to the, you know, to the office solutions. And I always tell people that it's my favorite hour of the week mm -hmm. because of the people that are there and Beautiful. how they come, like you said, uh, ready with intention, right? Being there, uh, there's no, there's no agenda for the call. We talk through uh, some of the issues and stuff that are impacting and affecting the industry. Um, but the, the people, right? And and I've heard the same thing. We have a, a couple of folks on that call that are, you know, very, very, very senior level uh, managers at the OEMs. And someone actually asked them in the call, they said, how do you make time for this? You know? And she said, how could I not? Right? Beautiful. Because for her, it was the people, right? Sure. Like, how often do you get yes, to do yes. that, to have that many yes, different yes. kinds of people together that are mm -hmm. all in the same industry? And uh, to be able to, you know, to talk with each other, right? So, anyways, sorry to throw that in there, but it I just love that. Really and, and that's and that's about around building community. And I talk a lot about building community. To get clean and sober, I had to build community, become a part of community to save my own life. Where earlier on, I had ostracized myself and been ostracized from community. But when we really build community, what happens is we get a virtual effect. Um, I mean, a, pardon me, a virtuous effect, a virtuous cycle, where now all of a sudden I'm more valuable to my clients because the community I've built is more valuable. So now if you say you've got an issue, I've got three people we can choose from who I can connect you to, to get that issue solved. And that's just a beautiful way to help everyone. Yeah, I, I completely agree. <laughs> and I did put a note there for building community, right? Because I yeah. think at the end of the day, yeah. a life well lived, right? That uh, Absolutely. You know, and, and I, I guess one of one of my uh, I always tell people it's my greatest gift and my also my greatest weakness is that I really have to like the people that I work with and work for. Right. Yes. That there has to be a genuine yes. uh, connection and, and trust and um, never at the expense of who you are. Right. And but of course, I'm 53 now. That hasn't been the case my whole life. <laughs> yeah, it takes a while. <laughs> yeah. But so I appreciate you sharing this with our audience because there are it can happen for younger people, you know, as long as they see the guidance, right? I just never had the lessons, right? I never had the mentorship. Absolutely. So. And certainly what I, I do want to do is make sure that we let our audience know how they get in touch with you. Um, I do have your website up here. I'm sure. just going through the blog section now, but you can uh, uh, find it at grantmuller.com. And if you're on LinkedIn, uh, this was kind of fun when I was uh, searching for you, actually. Um, I had to remember that it's the Grant Muller. So not any old Grant Muller, <laughs> the, the Grant Muller. <laughs> There's a Grant Muller who's a professional golfer. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Is that funny? I've run into that with uh, other people as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you can get him there on uh, on LinkedIn. Make sure that you do uh, connect with him uh, there. And of course, make sure you get your hands on this book. So uh, the Kindle version there, you can see $8.99, a hardcover for $28.99, and the paperback $16.79. You can see a perfect five-star uh, rating on that from the ratings, uh, 60 over 60 ratings. And certainly I'll I'll be sure to get a copy of this uh, book. I appreciate myself. that. Yeah. I appreciate that. Take a, take a read through the reviews. I'll let them speak for themselves. I am so honored. We've only um, been out a week, and wow. uh, it's been really cool to have this impact in the world. And so... I appreciate you helping me do that and uh, sharing it with your audience. And I'm looking forward to hearing feedback from, from anyone that reads the book. 
Well, that's wonderful. And uh, I really do appreciate you. And I mean that in a very genuine sense. I uh, love being able to spend a uh, half hour with you today. Thank yeah. you very much. And, and speaking of appreciating people, uh, for everyone that's you know uh, uh, tuned in again for another week, right? We do these every Wednesday, same time, 11 a.m. Uh, on Wednesdays, uh, Eastern Standard Time. And just want to thank you for you know joining us for another episode. And as I like to say at the end of every meeting, keep learning. All right. Love Thanks, that. everybody. Yeah.